Hebrews chapter 12, verses 1 through 13. Therefore, since we also have such a great, what? Cloud of witnesses surrounding us, let us rid ourselves of every obstacle and the sin which so easily entangles us, and let us, what? Run. Say run. 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 run with endurance the race that is set before us. Verse 2, looking only at Jesus, the originator and the perfecter of the faith, who for the joy set before him endured, who for the joy set before him endured the cross, despising the shame and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Verse 3, for consider him who has endured such hostility by sinners against himself so that you will not grow weary and lose heart. Verse 4, you have not yet resisted to the point of shedding blood in your striving against sin and you have forgotten the exhortation which is addressed to you as sons. You can underline this. My son, do not regard lightly the discipline of the Lord, nor faint when you are punished by him. For whom the Lord loves, he disciplines, and he punishes every son whom he accepts. Verse 7, it is for discipline, say discipline, discipline. that you endure. God deals with you as with sons. For what son is there whom his father does not discipline? But if you are without discipline, of which all have become partakers, then you are illegitimate children and not sons. Furthermore, we had earthly fathers to discipline us, and we respected them. Shall we not much more be subject to the father of spirits and live? For they disciplined us for a short time as seemed best to them. But he disciplines us for our good so that we may share his holiness. For the moment, all discipline seems not to be pleasant but painful. Yet to those who have been trained by it, say trained, trained. afterward it yields the peaceful fruit of righteousness. Therefore, strengthen the hands that are weak and the knees that are feeble and make straight paths for your feet so that the limb which is impaired may not be dislocated, but rather be healed. Father, bless this word, I pray in Jesus' name. May it fall on uh, the soles of each ground, O oh God, with seed that will bear fruit. May it not return void, I pray in Jesus' name, but that it will accomplish all that it's sent forth to do in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So recently, uh, we found ourselves going uh, to Hebrews chapter 12 for supporting texts. And we have uh, brought out verse 14, Hebrews 12, 14. You can just stay in the book of Hebrews 12. We're going to run through some more scriptures here. But the Bible says in Hebrews 12, chapter 14, pursue peace with some people. Uh, what? Uh, 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 really? Say all to Pastor Sherry. Uh, uh, all Pastor Sherry. It's all people. Pursue peace with all people and what the holiness without which no one will see the Lord Hebrews 12 verses 25 and 29 say with me the Bible says see to it that you do not refuse him who is speaking for if those did not escape when they refused him who warned them on earth much less will we escape who turn away from him who warns us from heaven. Verse 26. And his voice shook the earth then. But now he has promised saying, yet once more I will shake not only the earth, but also the heaven. Verse 27. 
This expression, yet once more, denotes the removing of those things which can be shaken as of created things so that those things which cannot be shaken may remain. Verse 28, therefore, say therefore, therefore. since we receive a kingdom, since we receive a kingdom, since we receive a kingdom which cannot be shaken, let's now, let's, let's show gratitude. What's that? What's gratitude? Be thankful, right? Yeah. Let's show gratitude by which we may offer to God an acceptable service with reverence and awe. For God is a consuming fire. Hallelujah. All consuming fire. Hallelujah. In the process of building the sermons that included those scriptures, my attention has been drawn to the first section of the chapter, so we're going to re uh, reset our focus focuses on verses 1 through 13. And as we do, however, don't lose sight of the fact that this chapter ends with the sentence we just read. Therefore, since we receive a kingdom which cannot be shaken, let's show gratitude by which we may offer to God an acceptable service with reverence and awe, for our God is what? A consuming fire. Hallelujah. We're going to go to point one, discipline. If you have your notes, you can take notes today. Praise the Lord. Discipline. The first three verses could be a sermon on their own, but today I've included them only for the context because they are not where the Holy Spirit has us focused. So we're going to start diving into the verses 4 and 6, and we'll move through the text from there. Amen? Amen. Amen. So let's go to Hebrews chapter 12, verses 4 through 6. And when you're there, turn to your neighbor and say, the Bible says. The Bible says. You have not yet resisted to the point of shedding blood in your striving against sin. And you have forgotten the exhortation which is addressed to you as sons. My son, do not regard lightly the discipline of the Lord, nor faint when you are punished by him. For whom the Lord loves, he what? And he punishes every son whom he accepts. There are only a couple of things I want to point out here first. Say first. first. When we hear the phrase, you have not yet resisted to the point of shedding blood. We often think of this as applying to dealing with persecution. Shedding blood, blood seems naturally to line up with standing firm in the face of persecution, right? So in our minds, we go to the scenario that has played out far, far too many times in history. Believers are presented with a choice, deny Christ or shed blood, right? So we ignore the rest of the phrase. We ignore the rest of the phrase, in your striving against sin. In your striving against sin. The theme of holiness keeps coming up over and over again, say holiness, say holiness. holiness. It almost feels like no matter where we start in scripture, the message of the day is holiness. Say with me holiness once holiness. again. Holiness. holiness, holiness is what I long for, almighty God. You have not yet resisted to the point of shedding blood in your striving against sin. How far do we go in striving against sin? Do we actively strive? Do we put up a fight? Or do we yield at inconvenience? Last week as we were singing, the Holy Spirit highlighted some of the lyrics and they fit with this thought. We were singing, bless the Lord, oh my soul and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. And I couldn't help but wonder, does all that is within me actually bless God? Do I have sin in me that is not a blessing to him or his name? Think about the level of purity 
the level of holiness that is required to sing this. And all that is within me, bless his holy name. I don't know every detail of each of your lives, but I know where you have let sin creep in. Maybe you have let it march right in. Bold is all get out, and you haven't done a thing about it. But whether it has secretly, secretly snuck in through an unguarded gate, or has kicked down from the front door of your household and become the centerpiece of your family life, you better identify it, confront it, and kick it out. Can I hear an amen? There is no room for a crack in your armor. Hallelujah. There's no room for a crack in your door. Hallelujah. There's no question that God is calling his people back to holiness. This is a call that we ignore at our own peril. Listen to what Paul says in verses 5 and 6. Hebrews chapter 12, verses 5 and 6. Turn to your neighbor and say, the Bible says, And you have forgotten the exhortation which is addressed to you as sons. My son, do not regard lightly the discipline of the Lord, nor faint when you are punished by him. For whom the Lord loves, he disciplines, and he punishes every son whom he what? Accepts. This is a reference in Proverbs chapter 3, verses 11 and 12. Proverbs chapter 3, verses 11 uh, and 12. Say with me, the Bible says. The Bible says, my son, do not reject the discipline of the Lord or loathe his rebuke. For whom the Lord loves, he disciplines just as a father disciplines the son in whom he delights. What a privilege to be called the children of God. Can I hear an amen? amen. Holly, part of that privilege is receiving the discipline of the Lord. The Hebrews to whom Paul was writing had forgotten that. Think about that for just a second. They aren't resisting sin to the extreme. And they have failed to hold the discipline of the Lord in high regard. If we are going to achieve, if we are going to achieve the level of holiness that the Lord is placing in front of us, we are going to have to resist sin to the utmost and we're going to have to embrace the discipline of the Lord. Can I hear an amen? amen. Number two, point two, in the moment, in the moment. Resisting to the point of shedding blood and being disciplined do not sound like something I want to endure. Right? What? Shedding of blood? But look, look what Paul says at the beginning of verse 7 in Hebrews chapter 12. The Bible says, it is for discipline that you what? Endure. It is what? For discipline that you Endure. We endure and receiving discipline is the reward. Woo! Sound kind of funny? This is starting to feel a little backwards, right? Right? So honestly, it's it only feels backwards if we don't place the right value on the discipline of the Lord, right? I need his correction. I don't know about you, but I need his correction. I need his instruction. I need his wisdom. I need his discipline. Amen? His discipline is a sign that I am his legitimate child. Hallelujah. I am his to teach and to guide. I am his to instruct. In all ways, I am his. He loves me. Hallelujah. He demonstrates this through his discipline. Paul talks about the discipline of our natural fathers in verses 7 and 9, which we won't reread at the moment. But listen again to verses 10 and 11. Hebrews chapter 12, verses 10 and 11. Are y'all with me? Yes. Now, if the person next to you is falling asleep, just come to do this. Amen? Amen. Say, listen. All right. For they disciplined us for a short time as seemed best to them, but he disciplines us for our good so that we may share in what? His holiness. For the moment, all discipline seems not to be pleasant but painful. Yet to those who have been trained, say trained. Trained. 
For those that have been trained by it, afterward it yields. Ah, it yields the peaceful fruit of righteousness. Woo! Once more, catch that theme of holiness. The purpose of his discipline is so that we may share in his. Share in whose? His. Share in whose? His holiness. I don't have holiness on my own that's worth anything. There is zero, zero value of my holiness. I need to share in his holiness. I want to see the peaceful fruit of righteousness throughout my life. Can I hear an amen? Oh, yeah. Let's go to point three. Straight paths. Straight paths. The last two verses of our text are where the Holy Spirit started this message for me. So we're going to go to Hebrews chapter 12, verses 12 through 13. Turn to your neighbor and say, the Bible says. The Bible says. Therefore, Therefore, strengthen the hands that are weak and the knees that are feeble. Woo! And make straight paths for your feet so that the limb which is impaired may not be dislocated, but rather be healed. Yeah. Yeah. Say, therefore. Therefore. Because disciple yields the peaceful fruit of righteousness. Strengthen the hands that are weak and the knees that are feeble and make straight paths, make straight paths for your feet. If you want to walk out the discipline of the Lord, you must be strengthened. Can I hear an amen? amen. Whatever level of strength you have, purpose to increase. Amen? We have uh, points of weaknesses in what we do. We each have points of weakness in how we walk. We must be wise enough to identify those things in our lives and actively deal with them. You got to deal with your sin. Turn to your neighbor and say, you got to deal with your sin. It isn't e enough. It's not enough to simply say, yep. Every single time this thing is in front of me, I sin. Turn to your neighbor and say, do something about it. Do something about it. How do you strengthen your physical body? You exercise. Say exercise. exercise. A body of motion stays in motion. You identify whatever you can do and you do it repeatedly. You learn the precise motion that will strengthen your muscles, right? right? And you do it over and over again. You do that until you can do the same thing with resistance in place. Over time you increase how much resistance you can face and still make the correct movement. You don't jump from one pound of resistance to a hundred pounds of resistance. Y'all are looking at me like a cow looking out of his face or something. It is a process. I'm practicing the presence of God. I'm making my way. Oh, there's an obstacle in the way. I want to kick it out of the way. I'm making my way straight, my path straight, whatever's in the way. Process. Okay, so consider this con in, in the context of discipline. Consider this in the context of holiness. Take responsibility for your spiritual life and embrace the discipline of the Lord. Can I hear a great oh, big yeah. hallelujah? Yeah. In Matthew chapter 7, verses 13 through 14. Matthew chapter 7, verses 13 through 14, the Bible says you can enter God's kingdom only through the narrow gate. The highway to hell is broad, and its gate is wide for many who choose that way. But the gateway to life is very narrow, and the road is difficult, and only 
few ever find it. I'm quite certain that the last verse of our text could be the primary text for the sermon all on its own. So let's go to Hebrews chapter 12, verse 13. And make straight paths for your feet. What's it say? Does it say what? Make? What? Make? So that the limb which is impaired may not be dislocated, but rather be healed. There's so much here. Consider the path upon you, upon which you walk. Consider it. Consider it. Have you purposefully chosen them? <coughs> oh, this is good. Maybe I should just say it again. Say, say it again, Pastor. Say it again. Consider the path upon which you walk. Have you purposefully chosen them? Have you thought about where they will take you? Oh, this is good. Have you thought about where they will take you and what you will encounter along the way? Oh, or are you traveling the path of least resistance? The path of least resistance will be well-worn and easy to follow. But it most likely goes around some things that you need to go through. Oh, that's good. Hallelujah. It most likely meanders and twists and turns like water courses through the wilderness. Make straight paths for your feet. Turn your neighbor and say, make straight paths for your feet. I don't see you turning to your neighbor and say, make straight paths for your feet. Hallelujah. Your daily decisions form your path. Your daily decisions form your path. Oh, now this is good. So much more than the decisions that we label as the big ones. The seemingly small day in and day out routines that we create for ourselves truly determine our paths. Yeah. Here Paul gives us so that. Say so that. Yeah. So that the limb which is impaired may not be dislocated but rather yeah. what? Yeah. healed. He wants to bring healing. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe you have a damaged relationship with your father. Yeah. The Lord offers you himself as a loving father. Can I hear an amen? Oh, yeah. Maybe you have a damaged relationship with yourself. The Lord rejoices over you amen. with singing. Oh, Hallelujah. I promise you, wherever there is impairment in your life, the Lord offers a solution. Okay. No better yet. Guess what? He is the solution. Amen. You will find as you walk in his way, as you follow his leading and respond to his discipline, he will bring that damaged part back into alignment with his plan and his will. Can I hear an amen? amen. Hallelujah. In conclusion this morning, in Proverbs chapter 3, verses 5 through 6, the Bible says, say that with me, the Bible says, to trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not unto your own understanding, but in all your ways acknowledge him, and he will make your paths straight. He will make your path straight. If you want him to make your path straight, listen to me. You have just three things to do. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Right? Do not rely on your own understanding. And acknowledge him in some of your ways. What? In all your ways. And as this becomes your way of life, your path, you will find strength, healing, and holiness. Man's problem has always been man's will, whether Christian or otherwise. In these passages, we are told here that we do not have the self-sufficiency to run this race alone. We need Jesus. We need 
the help from the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. And I know you've heard this scripture often, but I'm going to I'm going to say it one more time. For God so loved the world. This presents God's kind of love. He loves the world. Wow. That he gave his only begotten son. He gave him up to the cross. For that's what it took to redeem humanity. He hung on the cross over 2,000 years ago for all humanity. And he took on sin. And he was whipped and he was beaten. The Bible says he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of my peace was upon him. And by the stripes of Jesus, we were healed. So powerful. The cross is still so powerful today. He took my sins away. He took my sins away. And he keeps me singing every day. Hallelujah. I'm so glad he took my sins away. Jesus took my sins. He loved you so much, he took your sins away. All you have to do is receive him, repent of your sins. The Bible says, whosoever believes in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not his son into the world to contemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Amen. Jesus Christ is the only salvation for the world. Jesus paid it all. Amen. There is no other. You see, the Bible says, Jesus said this, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And no one comes to the Father except through me. You see, salvation is only through the cross. Consequently, the cross must ever be the object of our faith. The Bible says that Jesus is the light of the world. There is no other. He says, I am the light of the world. And whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. The cross teaches us about forgiveness. Jesus is the ultimate sacrifice for sin for all time. Can you imagine? He took on every sin, every disease, as though just waiting for you to say, Jesus, I recognize what you did for me. He did it for you whether you, you wanted it or not. And he's still doing it. Still so powerful today, the blood of Jesus. Amen. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 18, and I will close with this. You can stand with me this morning. We're going to get ready to take communion. Hallelujah. I mentioned something to someone the other day and I said I just want people to see Jesus I don't want them to see me but the Bible says but we all with open face belonging as in beholding as in a glass a mirror the glory of the Lord are changed into the same image from glory to glory even as by the Spirit of the Lord. The Holy Spirit alone can make us what we ought to be, which He does within the perimeters of the finished work of Christ and our faith in that sacrifice. Amen. Thank you, Jesus, for the finished work that you did on the cross. Amen. What great faith we have in that tremendous sacrifice. For Jesus, he paid it all. Amen. Let's give him a praise and glory.